again on this night where I am now, Friday, and so I'm speaking to you one more time from God's Word. And uh, <clears throat> for those of you who have been following our ministry, we appreciate what God has been stirring and doing in your heart, and we trust that you just send a message to us. Let us know that you are enjoying the ministry. Let us know that you are um, receiving from um, what God has been using us to do for you and in you. And just be a blessing, just a word of encouragement. So we appreciate um, those of you who are viewing right now. I want to speak tonight to you on um, from the book of Second Kings, chapter four, and from verse uh, eight uh, to thirty-seven. But I'll try not to read all of that um, because there's a whole lot of reading inside here. But I just read some for you, and we go along the way. And the Bible says in verse from verse eight, and it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. So it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is the holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be that when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on the day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber, and he lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call the Shulamite. And when he had called her, she stood before him, and he said unto him, and she, he said unto him, Say thou unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered and said, Verily, she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, he stood in the door. And he said unto her, About this season, according to the time of life, you will embrace his son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto your handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare his son at that season, that Elisha had said unto her, According to the time of life, and when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to the, back to the lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on his knees till noon, and he died. And, when, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and she shut the door upon him and went out. She called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men, one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said to her, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It is well. And run now, I pray thee, to meet her. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, 
he died. And she said it as well. Sorry, um, I, I... Run now, I pray thee to meet him, and say unto her, It is well with thee, it is well with thy husband, it is well with the child. And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God, to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But he, he has, he came near to trust her where the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. The Lord has hid it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son, my Lord? Did I not deceive, did, did not, uh, do not deceive me? Then she saddled an ass and said to the, her servant, Drive and go forward, slack not a riding for me except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God and Mount Carmel and came to pass that when the man of God saw, he saw afar off that he said to he has his servant, Behold, yonder is the Shunammite. And so I'll stay there and I will just, because um, it's a whole other reading, and for the sake of time, I will just try to um, focus on, on, on several things that I gleaned from this portion of scripture uh, concerning this Shunammite woman. Firstly, I would like to entitle this though, Observations that I've made from a great woman, the Shunammite woman. Observations that I've made from this great woman. And the Bible speaks concerning her as a great woman. And it's interesting why I think that the Bible speaks of her as being great. And firstly, you would recognize why I'm saying that she's a great woman. This woman was a hospitable woman. She was a servant woman. She had a servant spirit. And why am I saying that? The Bible says in verse um, 8 to 10, fell under the dead Elisha, um, passed to Shunam, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that off as he passed by, he turned in fiddle. And of course, you would say that what she did, she moved her husband when she realized that this man of God was passing several times and staying off at her place and so on. And she wanted to make him comfortable. She, she was giving him some meals and so on when he would have come, but she wanted him to have his sense of privacy and peace and comfort. And so the Bible tells us that she told, told her husband, let's make a place for him. Put us a light there, put a stool there. So when he comes in, he can be, you know, uh, private and he can do what he wants and he can seek God. And so she honored, she, she, she was a woman who was hospitable. She was not just a woman who, who just wanted to receive, but she was a woman who perceived and understood that this man uh, uh, required some privacy and so on. And so the Bible tells us that she, she, she had this humble, hospitable servant spirit. And that's one of the reasons why I'm saying that she is a great woman. She's great because she had a servant spirit. And the Bible reminds us that greatness comes from having servant spirit. Because the Bible says the greatest in the kingdom are not those who are being served as it will, but those who serve. Those are the great ones. And God sees those who have that servant spirit. He sees them as great people. And that's why I believe that the Bible announces this woman and speaks to her as being a great woman. And uh, I am saying to you tonight, wherever you are, greatness doesn't come from being served. Greatness does not come from getting the accolades of men. Greatness comes from those who are willing to serve people, those who are willing to attend to the needs of people. And this woman attended to the needs of this man of God. And as a result, the Bible tells us, God says that she's a great woman. So uh, I said, firstly, this woman has a hospitable spirit and she is a, has a servant spirit. Secondly, from this portion of scripture, I want you to recognize that this woman is not only a hospitable woman. I want you to also recognize that this woman is a perceptive woman. She is a perceptive woman. And I made mention of it earlier. It was 9, the Bible says, And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive, or perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passes by us continually. This woman had the ability to perceive. She was perceptive. She was discerning. She did not just see an ordinary person before her when this man of God came. She did not just see him as just another man who passes by. But she perceived that he is a holy man of God. And I believe that he would have so conducted himself. But even though he did not say anything to her, but she had the ability to perceive who was coming before them. And it's important in life that you have the ability to perceive because perception really is very important for us. How you perceive things, how you perceive things and people around you will determine how you respond to them. How you perceive God, that is how you will respond to him, how you will relate to him. Your perception of God, your perception 
perception of men and women of God, how you perceive them, will determine how you will respond to them. If the man of God that you have over you, a woman of God that you have over you, is one that you perceive that God is with him, uh, you would treat him or her with respect and honor. And that is what this woman did. She treated the man of God with respect and honor because she perceived that he was a holy man of God. And the Bible tells us that is why she would have built this place, put the light in there, put the stool in there, make him comfortable because she perceived that he was a man of God. To perceive means to be capable of exhibiting keen perception, of to be observant, to understand or have insight. This woman had insight. Uh, if you cannot perceive right, you will not be able to receive. And this woman, because of her ability to perceive, she later on was able to receive. Jesus, as you remember, the Bible says that those who he walked with among um, his own people, they did not perceive who he was. Jesus was doing supernatural things in so many different places. The Bible tells us that Jesus did mighty signs and wonders and miracles wherever he would have gone. And when he came back to his own hometown, he could not have done much there. The Bible says he could not do much there because the people saw him as Joseph's son. Whom you perceive the man or the person that God has placed in your life. Whom you perceive them to be among you. That is how you will be able to receive from them. And if you perceive that that man, that woman that God has placed over you. If you perceive them to be just an ordinary person. Yes, I know they're human. But there is an anointing upon their lives. There's something that God has placed upon their lives to be a blessing to you. And if your perception is wrong, then you will not be able to do what this woman was able to get in the next, the third point that I'm raising and placing before you. This woman uh, was not only hospitable, she was not only a perceptive woman, but this woman was also a receptive woman. Because she perceived right, it made her receptive. When you are, have the right perception, you can now become receptive. And that's my third point. She was receptive. Verse 15 says, and he said unto her, call her. And he said unto him, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in, in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, you will embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. And the thing is that although those were the words that came out of her mouth, but deep in that woman's spirit there was a sense of delight because i want you to understand if she was not if she did not receive that word it would not have produced the end result that she able she was able to get from it and so she was receptive to the word that the man of god spoke to her because she may have had some disappointments in life previously and that's why she's saying please do not lie to me or maybe she would have perceived or seen herself at that point in time as a woman who now um the, for the bible said that her husband was old and they did not have children so she thought probably that listen i have passed the age and it's not possible for me to able to produce any children so when the man of god spoke those words to her it was difficult for her to really come to terms with it but nevertheless less though she was receptive to that word and because she was receptive that seed was able to produce in her exactly what the man of God said that at about this next season the time of life you will hold a son in your hand and this woman at the right time was able to hold this son in her hand because she was receptive to God's word. And I want you to recognize that even in those days, it was certainly a difficult thing for that woman to be receptive at that point because I know that she may have gone through some stuff and in your own experience, you may have been going through some stuff. This woman in oriental times when a woman did not have children, they were ridiculed, they were scoffed at, they were mocked at, they were treated with scorn and you know all kinds of negative things that she may have been subjected to. But I want you to recognize that at this moment God changed the whole situation for her. What may have seemed impossible now became possible because she firstly had that attitude that she was a servant. She served God's servant and as she served, she was now in a place where she was perceptive and her perception brought her a place where she was now receptive to the word of God that was spoken to her and that 
because she was receptive, it changed the course of her life. It changed her sense of shame and brought her to a place of joy. It took away that place of disappointment that she suffered with probably for years. And now she was in a place where she was experiencing the favor and the blessings of God. The joy of the Lord would have probably consumed her life at this point. Now she was holding in her hand a seed that she was spoken to her by the man of God. And when she looked at that son, I could imagine the sense of joy and delight that she was feeling at that moment because that woman understood that when she was showing that hospitality to that man of God and she was perceptive of him that she at this point in time was able to be receptive of the grace and blessings of God in her life when you are when you perceive right you will receive right if you have the wrong perception, you will not be able to receive right. And I, I urge you, those of you who are listening to me, have the right perception of the man, the servant, the person that God will bring across your path. Please be careful even how you treat people because sometimes God will bring people across your path with an intention to be a blessing to you, but you had the wrong perception. And do not please underestimate God's ability. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> To use just about anyone sometimes because of a person's uh, should I say the status or their position or the things that, or how they might appear to you sometimes you might choose to treat them with a certain kind of attitude that might be negative but please understand that God will allow persons to come across your path that can be a tremendous blessing to you perceive right and you will receive right so this woman was perceptive the result she also was receptive. She seemed to have given up on the, uh, this aspect of her life. Hence, what you will find that that response she had, don't lie to me. But more or less, God changed the whole experience. Fourthly, from this post, um, um, portion of scripture, I want you to recognize that uh, when the prophet, the man of God spoke to her, that she was able to trust the man of God's word. I want you to recognize that she was able to trust the veracity of the prophet's word. The prophet's word as he spoke to her, she was able to trust that because, and that is what caused her to become receptive because she trusted the word. She trusted the veracity of the word that came from the prophet's mouth. She was now able to be receptive of that word because the thing is, she understood that what came from the man of God's mouth was truthful. She knew that there was a power that was in that word to convey and to bring to pass that which he spoke. And so she received that word with a sense of joy. Verse 16 says, and he said about this time season, according to the time of life, you will embrace a son. And she said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, don't lie to me. And the woman conceived and bare a son. Now I want you to recognize when the man of God speaks a word to you, once it came from God, you can trust the veracity of that truth, of that word because that word will be established in your life. That word will come to pass. You can trust that word because it is not just his words but it is the word of God that came through him to you because sometimes God will choose to speak to you even as he may be speaking to you right now. I'm not saying what I'm saying to you. I'm speaking to you as a prophet per se but I'm speaking a word to you that might be prophetic in nature to you because God might be speaking to you in a very personal way right now when you are that even as you open up yourself that this word can cause uh, the thing that God has been speaking to you or the thing that God seeks to bring to pass in your life if you will be receptive to this word this word can change your condition change your position right now if you only open up your heart and allow God to touch your life at this point in time so she trusted Ah, the prophet's word. And because she trusted the prophet's word, the word of God brought to pass exactly what God would have said to her. At the, at the time of life, she embraced that son. My God, how we can trust him when he speaks to us. The, four, the fifth thing I want you to observe from this woman is that you can also recognize her audacity, the audacious nature that she had. Verse 24, the Bible says that after she would have had this child, my God, she was not willing to let go of the son that God would have blessed her with. She was not willing to part. And probably that's one of the reasons why she said, maybe she have seen disappointments previously. I don't know to what extent she'd been disappointed. But on this occasion, this woman was very audacious. And the Bible says in verse 24, uh, the scripture says, run now I pray 
ready to meet her and say unto her, it is well with, is it well with thee? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And then the Bible says, and she answered, it is well. Now what caused that woman, this whole incident happened because the Bible tells her that one day after the son was born, he was out in the field working and he felt his head hurting. And the Bible says, of course, eventually he died and the son passed away in the home of the woman. But the woman, even though the son was dead, as far as she knows, and the son was lying in the bed and he was lifeless. But this woman, she came to her husband and says, I need to get one of the young men to go with me. I need him to go to meet the man of God. And her husband said, listen, it is not the right season or time for you to engage the man of God in any kind of conversation or meeting. And so there apparently was a time and a season for which she was supposed to connect with him. But she ignored all of that. She went against all of those reasoning and all of the things that was now confronting her. And it's amazing how this woman, when she can look at a son on a bed dead, she can look at that only child that she had that was dead. And when the question was asked by the man of God, uh, the servant of, of the man of God, and tell me, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your son? Her response to the words that came out of her mouth was, it is well. How can somebody who is in the midst of a situation Situation where death has confronted them, where situations and circumstances seem so, so difficult and trying and testing. How can she still allow to come out of her mouth saying, all is well? Tells me that this woman was very audacious in her attitude. In order sometimes for you to find and experience God moving in your life, you have to have an audacious attitude. To, audacious, to be audacious means to be bold or arrogant. To disregard all the natural or normal restraints. And this woman certainly was disregarding all the restraints that was before her. All the circumstances that was before her. She was bold. She was disregarding all of the things that presented itself before her. And in the face of all of that, she was staying decla still declaring, it is well. Where you are tonight, where you are right there in your home, things may be chaotic, things may not be going right, things might not be good right now, and the things that you're facing right now might be difficult, but still let it comfort all of your mouth if you're Christian. If you believe God this night, I want you to begin to continue to believe and declare just like this woman, that all is well. Because those words that came out of her mouth were words of faith. She believed God. She believed that he was able to change this condition. She believed that he was able to do exceedingly as the Bible says and abundantly and above all that we can ever ask or think. She proclaimed from her mouth saying all is well. And because she believed that all was well. The Bible tells us she experienced a supernatural miracle. This woman was reckless. She was daring. She was not afraid to confront in order to get what she wanted. So she was not afraid to confront and engage the man of God in a time and season when it was not right or ideal. She engaged him in a moment, in a time when it was not even appropriate. And she still decided, I'm going to see the man of God. She was audacious. And in order for you to get sometimes what you need to get from God, you need to have an audacious spirit, an audacious attitude that tells you, I will not give up. I will not cave in. I will not quit. Sixthly, I want you to recognize from this woman's experience that she was not only audacious, but she was tenacious as well. She was tenacious. And that is the ability to hold fast. The ability to be not easily pulled apart, to be cohesive. She was in a place where she was deciding, I will be persistent in maintaining or adhering or seeking something that is valued or desired. And what this woman valued, what this woman was so tenacious about holding on to. Why am I saying she was tenacious? Here what the Bible tells her. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by his feet. But Gehazi came near, thrust her away, uh, and the man of God said, leave her alone. And she says in verse 30, and the mother of the child said, as the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave you. And she arose, and she followed him. I want you to recognize her tenacity. 
She was not willing to let go. She knew that her hope was in this man of God. She knew that when he speaks the word, she knew that she perceived this man to be a man of God. And the scripture tells us that when the, uh, she came seeking for help as it relates to her son who was dead, the man of God decided, I will send my servant. And she says, I don't want the servant. It's not the servant I came to. And the servant uh, tried to pull her away from uh, the, the man of God because he had a responsibility to the protect and guard the man. And so she was. he was now trying to protect the man of God from this woman. And so this woman was so tenacious. She held onto his feet and said, I will not leave you. As the Lord lives and as my soul lives, I will not leave you. Are you saying that right now to God? You may have been praying for something. You may have been believing God for something. You may have been crying out for something. You may have been anticipating something happening and it has not happened yet. I want to say to you, just like Peter was able to say to Jesus in a moment when there were those who were walking away from him, Peter responded when Jesus asked him, will you also go? And Peter says, Lord, to whom shall I go when you alone have the word of eternal life? I want you to know that it's only in him alone, Jesus alone, you will be able to find the secret, the answers, the solutions to all of the problems and the challenges that you're going through. Jesus alone. And I'm asking you, I'm saying to you tonight, hold fast to him. Be tenacious in your relationship. Whatever confronts you, whatever engages you, whatever comes up against you, hold fast to him. Stay strong. Hold on to him. Because when you hold on to him and say to him, I will never leave you. In fact, he has said it long time ago. I will will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That's what Jesus said. And I want you to know, as long as you hold fast to him, he will come true for you. This woman, when the man of God went to her home, the Bible tells us that when he went, he stretched himself upon the child and the child came back to life. She experienced a supernatural miracle. She would have seen God work for her. In fact, it was a supernatural miracle from the fact that she had a child at so late a stage in her life. It was a super supernatural miracle and now she saw God even raise the same child that she had and who was dead. God raised that child back to life. This woman had a reason and a right to give praise and honor to God because she saw the hand of God move in her life on several occasions and she knew at this point in time I believe that nobody could have told her that this wasn't a man of God. She was convinced this was a man of God sent to be a blessing to her life. And I'm saying to you, Jesus has come to you even as he's speaking to you tonight through this vessel to cause you to understand that he loves you, he cares about you. He sees your condition, he sees every situation that you're going, that you're facing right now. Jesus wants to touch your life and give you a supernatural miracle. The first miracle I believe that he would want to give to you is the experience if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior. If you don't know him in a personal way, he wants to give you the miracle of a brand new life. The Bible says in man, any man being Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things can become new. If you will open up your heart to him right now. He will give you a transformation, transform life. He will change that thing, those things that seems to be uh, broken. He will change stuff, things that seems to be uh, in a place where it's so difficult and hard. He will come in and make things new. All things are past and he will bring all things new. He loves you. He cares. You might be a believer going through some stuff right now. Listen, not because you're a Christian doesn't suggest that you will go through some challenges and difficulty and so The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Bible didn't stay there. It says, but the Lord will deliver us out of all of them. There is a delivering power available right now, even as I preach and share with you right now. There is a delivering power available to break chains, to break the yokes, to lift the burdens, and to bring you to a place of newness. There is a delivering power in the name of Jesus. So I pray for you right now. Father, I release that power. I release that anointing and I break the chains. I break the yokes. I break the yokes of alcohol. I break the yoke of drugs. A separation, divorce, difficult situation within families, disobedience, rebellion. I break the chains in those homes. I break the chains over those lives right now. And I release the fire of your presence to bring change in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you've been listening to me, we are from World Changes Assembly, situated at number seven, Flanders Street, Gonzalez Street, uh, Flanders Street, sorry, Newlands Village Beach. 
and inform you and advise you. Please feel free to come and share with us at 10.30 every Sunday morning. A blessing awaits you as you walk through those doors. The fire and the presence of the Lord God will consume you because there is a holy presence at this house. I'm trusting that you will be a part of the experience. God bless you. and See you again sometime. Have a great night, everyone, and be blessed in Jesus' name.